to The Popish Plot. I'm Mike. I'm Jessica. And I'm Nate. It's Celestial Saturday, and today we are observing the 50th anniversary of the first moon landing. But Celestial starts with C. Yes, but it still works alliteratively. The, the sound works. The, but... the, the sound works. Maybe we'll be the people that misspell Celestial with an, with a, with an S? No, that looks no, silly. That would be, that'd be awful. That would, that would be weird. Well, we could go like Selenian Saturday, because we're talking about the moon. It's Saturday, and we're talking about the Apollo missions. <laughs> 50 years ago today, the 20th of July, 1969, Mr. Neil Armstrong and Colonel Buzz Aldrin became the first men to set foot on the moon. Have and you... the only ones that most people really care about. I'm just going to be honest. Man, you're selling Pete Conrad and Alan Bean short. Yeah. What, about, what, what about Alan Shepard, the first man to golf on the moon? Right, well, that's kind of awesome. Alan Shepard was not only the first American in space, but then the first man to golf on the moon, Alan Shepard. But we here at the Popish Plot wanted to talk specifically about two incidents connected to the Apollo program. So, back in the day, there was the space race between the United States, the good guys, and the Soviet Union, the bad guys. We were totally going to beat them. Absolutely. Now, in the early days, it, things were not going so well. They got an early start. At the end of World War II, we'd kidnapped a bunch of Nazi scientists, and they'd kidnapped a bunch of Nazi scientists, and they put their Nazis to slightly better use than we did, so they had a bit of a rocketry advantage. Mm -hmm. Yes, however, I have heard from um, history books that we were glad that they did Sputnik first, mm -hmm. simply because, it, technically, it was flying over other countries that land, mm -hmm. so we didn't want to be the one where France is like, uh, your, your satellite has invaded our space. Yeah. Plus, it also showed us just how backwards they were, because if we'd built something with the capabilities of Sputnik, it would have been much, much smaller. Yeah. So already the Soviets were falling behind on computers and things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because communism doesn't work. They got but, the good rocket scientists. We got a good other scientists. We got a bunch of good rocket scientists, yeah. too. We I'm not saying we didn't. I'm just saying we, 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 got, we got some good other scientists, too. So maybe one day Jimmy Aiken will do an episode about Operation Paperclip. Mm-hmm. President Kennedy, our, to this point, only Catholic president, pledged that within a decade, the United States would land men on the moon, and we would do this and the other things, not because they're easy, but because they are hard. And because he said so, and now we're, and now we're kind of bound. Well, especially once he got assassinated. Mm. I know, yeah. Like, if, you know, if, he'd, if he'd not been reelected, if he'd lived and not been reelected in 64, who knows what would have happened. But... <laughs> Yes. Yeah, which is fair. why they had to get it done then. Exactly, they couldn't get an extension. They could be mm. like, "Yeah, could you do another speech about maybe in the next decade and a half we'll do this?" <laughs> we could probably do it like mid seventy one. That's yeah. not within the decade. Oh man! <laughs> but we threw resources at it and got the problem solved. Now the motto of the United States is "In God We Trust," and this played a very important role in the Apollo program. So, in, despite the fact that it was named after a, uh, you know. Uh, Greek god. We've never we've never had a problem uh, appropriating these things. That's fair. Plus, all the celestial bodies are named after Roman and Greek gods. So that's true. Yeah. Except for craters on the moon, they're yeah. named after Jesuits. They name it after all kinds of things. <laughs> Jesuits, other people. Yeah. <laughs> so, in December of 1968, mm -hmm. the crew of Apollo 8 became the first human beings to leave Earth orbit <laughs> and to orbit the moon. They did this at Christmas time, and as they orbited the moon, they made several very, 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 very widely viewed television broadcasts. Well, there was like two channels. And this was the first time that men had ever orbited the moon. It was an amazing thing. And the crew of Apollo 8 did something very, very touching. Being the first human beings to see the Earth from that far away, they had a unique perspective. They were the first ones to see Earth rise. The mm. Earth coming up over the horizon of another body. You know, all of us on Earth are familiar with sunrise, with moonrise, you know, with the stars rising above the horizon. They were the first ones to see the good Earth from that perspective. And so they mark the occasion by reading the first ten verses of the first chapter of Genesis. In the beginning, God creating the heavens and the Earth. And over and over and over again, it is good. Now, this was the most watched television program in human history at that point. Again, there weren't very many channels. Yeah, that's fine. So everyone who had a TV was tuned in. Yeah. It was a moment of tremendous triumph. 
And it was paying homage to the fact that we, apart from God, can do nothing. You can try to do a lot, but we'll fail, we'll fail at most everything. It didn't, didn't so much, the Tower of Babel didn't so much work out for those guys, so... I don't know. Maybe they were trying to get a, a linguistic di differentiation. They said, we have to build this tower or we'll be scattered. So what happened? They were scattered. They brought about the very thing they were trying to forestall. Self-fulfilling prophecy is weird like that. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, that happens a lot in the Bible. People who are inadvertent evangelists. All right, but we were talking about rockets. So, yes, because rockets are awesome. Mm -hmm. And everyone acknowledged that rockets were awesome. Except... For the atheists, who are always against fun and awesomeness. So, some atheists filed a lawsuit against NASA saying that the Apollo 8 astronauts reading from Genesis on a television broadcast had somehow violated the separation of church and state. Well, they are government employees. And they don't have the, they don't have the freedom to express themselves in any capacity? Well, in fairness, most people actually understand and misunderstand the, the, the whole nature of the freedom of the separation of church and state. It's, it's not actually separation of church and state. Mm -hmm. that, that there's, that's nowhere in, in, the, in the Constitution at all. Correct. I believe it, it's from a letter from Jefferson. Yes. but, but there's a, but, is not an official law. No, and, and even still, the, the real point that was, that was trying to be made was that the government should not be able to interfere with one's free exercise. And that yet, that was exactly the effect that the lawsuit had. So, this was Christmas 1968. We fast forward to July of 69. On the 16th of July, the amazing Saturn V rocket blasts off. Apollo 11 rockets to the moon. They arrive in orbit. They get into the lunar module. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin descend to the surface. They become the first human beings to land on another of God's amazing worlds. And the logo for MTV. And the logo for MTV. Back now, in the day. I'm, now I'm hearing the music in my head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Flashing colors. We're old enough mm -hmm. that we can remember that. <laughs> so, on the moon, they then prepare to mark the momentous occasion. Buzz Aldrin made a broadcast where he asked everyone watching to take a few moments to think about what had just happened, what was happening, and to be grateful. He'd wanted to say a lot more, but the NASA flight director, Deke Slayton, asked him not to because of the lawsuit that was still pending over Apollo 8. And then Colonel Aldrin took communion on the moon. Now, he, he's a Presbyterian, so their understanding of the real presence is greatly deficient, but... Basically, he ate bread and, and drank a little bit of grape juice. But in his best belief, he, still, he observed communion on the moon. Mm -hmm. You know, he had already prayed over a bit of bread, and had already prayed over a bit of, you know, some grape-derived beverage. <clears throat> he had a tiny little chalice... That is still on display in his Houston church. Ah. Is it like a Lego size one almost? It's a little bigger than that, but not much. <laughs> but it's still shaped like a chalice. It's super cool. <laughs> and he took communion. Because he recognized. Now, Buzz Aldrin is not a perfect man like all of us. He's a sinner. He's had his struggles. Occasionally he's punched a journalist. Who hasn't, who hasn't wanted <laughs> to? Come on. And he's had so many opportunities and punched so few. Mm-hmm. But he recognized that in these most important moments, I mean, for pity's sake, men had just landed on the moon! In a few minutes, they'd be walking about. Sadly, finding no cheese. None. Sigh. Mm -hmm. Maybe if they dug deeper. But in our moments of triumph, that is the appropriate time to give thanks to God. But because of some people who have an extremely narrow view who view anyone with a divergent opinion as a threat, Colonel Aldrin was not permitted to share that experience with the American people. Instead, we all have to pretend just to go along with the acceptable secularist agenda. And of course, even though the lawsuit over Apollo 8 was eventually dismissed, it achieved its purpose in a permanent chilling of any mention of God 
in relation to the space program. Hmm. And in the 50 years since the amazing triumph of Apollo 11, what have we really achieved? In those first seven years of space flight, from the time that you know, Alan Shepard flew in space to the time that Neil Armstrong became the first man to set foot on the moon, we went from little one-man spacecraft that just went on parabolic trajectories and didn't even orbit to sending men to the moon, having them walk about, and then returning them safely. In the 50 years since, you know, there were, there were another five missions that put men on the moon, plus the Apollo 13 mission where they didn't get to walk on the moon, but at least they came back safe. And then, well, we, we had Skylab, and we had the space shuttle, and 40% of those exploded. That's, that's, if it was baseball, those would be good percentages. Seriously. And, and if it didn't involve, you know, horrible deaths. Yeah, if it hadn't killed 14 people. And, you know, we've got the space station, which is cool. And, and now we're playing nice with the Russians. We're we'll all hanging out together on the space yeah, station. Yeah, because we, don't have the because we no longer have the ability to send men into space, so we have to hitch rides with yes. the Russians who are using Apollo-era technology with their Soyuz capsules. We also put a bunch of satellites up for yes. that MTV with the picture of him on the moon. So many satellites that we've now got a whole bunch of space junk. Now I'm hearing that music again. All right. So. We technically made aliens because we, we, we've released enough bacteria that theoretically there's now bacteria that has always lived in space. Yeah. <laughs> That'll never come back to haunt us. Not at all. I've never seen any horrible film in which that would be a horrible thing. And it's I've not seen good films in which that would be a horrible thing. And horrible <laughs> films in which that would be a good thing. But the Apollo 8 astronauts reading from Genesis as they orbit the moon, as they become the first men to see the Earth, that doesn't diminish anyone. Even if you're not a believer, all they are doing is acknowledging their belief and the fact that God's providence made all of this possible. Buzz Aldrin taking communion on the moon doesn't diminish anyone else. Well, I'm sure that, you know, the Bishop of, of Orlando, who's sure. in charge of the moon, was like, C can we get a Catholic up there? Absolutely. <laughs> we need space priests. <laughs> well, plus, of course, it's interesting because he you know, he went to church in Houston. I'm sure the rockets were launched from or, from Florida, but they're administered from Texas, so it's you could have... I'm sure if Cardinal DiNardo wanted to dispute it... that there'd It was be, like arm wrestle for it. There you go. Well, and, and now that you've got to mention you know, that, that he was the first person to take communion, although, albeit... Not a, a, a ca proper Catholic communion. Yeah, not on not, the moon. not the Holy Eucharist, but I, still. I really want to be the first person to receive Holy Eucharist on the moon, and, and not like he did while he's sitting inside some safe capsule. I mean, I want to go out on the surface of the moon. <laughs> so we're gonna have to have a discussion <laughs> off camera with Nate about how space helmets work, and why you ought not to lift up your visor to take in the host. In the I, vacuum of space. I've heard from, you know, scientific sources. You got about 30 seconds before it will kill you. Before it will kill you <laughs> doesn't mean that you won't be messed up before then. I can totally make this work, guys. <laughs> all right, so. I mean, I can't, in all fairness, I can't pass all the rules required to fly to space because the vomit comet is not going to look be pretty. <laughs> I think it's safe to say that a Popish Plot space program is a fairly distant proposition at this point. But if Very you, distant. But, but if, if you guys want it, we can make it happen. No. If it's God's will, if it will If it's God's happen. will, it will happen. It seems if, highly if, unlikely if, that if it you is. Would, if you would like to help hasten our ability to get to that point, please feel free to contact us at the Gmail, at the, at the Gmail address down below. We, we, we have some ideas. It's a long way off, but... You I'm could help us get started. <laughs> so, this 50th anniversary of the first moonwalk, we here at the Published Plot simply invite you to think about whether or not our civic life as Americans is, has been enhanced by the banishing of expressions of faith from the public square, or whether, without imposing belief on anyone else, simply expressing our own faith has contributed mightily to some of our most amazing achievements. So today, take a few minutes. 
Once it gets dark, I know it's summer, so it gets dark late, but if possible, take a look at the moon and think about the fact that, holy wow, we put them there. Their footprints are still on the moon because there's no wind. Yeah. Yes, no the flag atmosphere. got leached out. Only the first one got knocked down because after that they learned you have to plant it farther from no, the no, capsule. It, 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 it's, it's bleached. bleached. Sure, sure. All that radiation. Well, it has very little atmosphere up there to yeah, protect it. Yeah, the, the sun is a giant ball of nuclear death. Plus, after 50 years, if we had a flag out here, it would be you know, pretty much gone. Exactly. So, comment below about your favorite thing about the Apollo program. Or, whether or not you want to see a video of Nate riding the vomit comet. No, you do not. <laughs> you will not make it. Subscribe to our channel. Ring the church bell to be notified when the next plot is uploaded. Because you like space, you'll give this a thumbs up. <laughs> and, until next time, remember to... Live your faith. Love your faith. Share, share that, that love, love. Even with space aliens. Yes. Although... I have to wonder if anyone was upset about, you know, when they found out what um, they said when they launched the first nuclear weapon and went, you know, and quoted um, Hindu scripture. <laughs>